Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about NTFS permissions and showing you what they do and how they work and then we'll go ahead and do a little demonstration at the end here. Alright, so this is going to be quite a bit of information so I'm going to go through it, you know, rather quickly so it doesn't take forever to get through everything. So hopefully it'll all make sense by the time we're done. Alright, so what are NTFS permissions in Windows 11? So these Permissions determine how users and groups can access files and folders on an NTFS formatted drive. That's the key part right there. So if you're doing FAT32, then you're not going to have these NTFS permissions. So these permissions help control security, ensuring only authorized users can modify, view, or execute certain files. All right, so what are these permissions used for? So like I mentioned on the first one, they're used to control access to files to folders on NTFS formatted drives. And some of the key uses include restricting or allowing access to specific files or folders for users or groups. Enforcing the principle of least privilege, which ensures only users have access they truly need. Because you never want to give someone more access than they need. Uh, because then they could possibly do things they shouldn't be doing with your files and folders, such as editing them or deleting them or even moving them somewhere else. All right, it prevents unauthorized changes or deletion of important data. Then you could also enable auditing and track user access and file activity. So this is usually disabled by default, but it is possible to do some auditing. And then it also supports complex security models in enterprise environments with nested permissions and inheritance. So one thing to note is these permissions are effective for both local and remote network access. So if you're accessing a share over the network, it's still going to have NTFS permissions that will apply to your user account. So if you're on a domain, like at the office, this is much easier to manage and configure than if you're just using a work group configuration where you're just, you know, networking a few computers at home. So it used to be easier in Windows 10 when setting up work group networking, but now in Windows 11, it's a little more complicated and it's kind of harder to do. You know, because Windows 11 is supposed to be more secure, so they kind of clamp down on some of these types of things. Okay, so we have NTFS and share permissions. So you've probably heard of both of those. So for the NTFS permissions, these are on your NTFS formatted volumes. And like I mentioned, they control local and network access with file level control. And then you have share permissions. So these only apply when accessing folders over the network. And they provide basic folder level control, such as read, change, or full control. So if you're not sharing a folder, you don't have to worry about any share permissions. And then when you do share a folder, you're going to have to choose from one of these options. And then you could apply your NTFS permissions as well to kind of fine tune the user access. So when both permissions are applied, the most restrictive combination determines the user's effective access. You always have to remember that. So even if you have a share permission with full control, the NTFS permissions will, can still block write access. So think of NTFS permissions as overruling share permissions. Okay, so NTFS permissions for the scope, they apply to local and network access. Share permissions only apply to network access. Granularity, you could fine tune your NTFS permissions while share permissions are more simple. Uh, effective control, so like I said, NTFS will take precedence over your share permissions. And then for priority, the most restrictive between the two wins on either case there. All right, so let's talk about the NTFS permission levels. So we have full control. This includes all permissions. So it allows users to take ownership and actually change these permissions. So you want to be careful when granting full control. And then we have modify. Allows reading, writing, deleting, and modifying contents. And then read and execute. View folder contents and execute files. And list folder contents. So this only applies to permissions on folders, not for files. And then we have read, which allows you to read contents and file properties. And then write, which allows you to add files and folders. You could actually create these files and folders and then write to the files. All right, so now let's talk about some other permissions. So we have special permissions, uh, which you'll see when you check out the security properties of a file or folder. So a couple examples would be read attributes or delete subfolders and files. And these are configured via the advanced security settings dialog. Then we have a deny permissions. So deny permissions override allow permissions. So you need to remember that. So 
if you're ever going to be denying people access to a folder, then no matter what their other permissions may be, they're still going to be locked out. And you want to be careful when using this because you don't want to lock anybody out of something they should be allowed access to. All right, so an example would be, let's say a user is in a group that has allow access to a folder, but an individual deny is set for them, the deny will win. So even if they're in a group called sales, for example, and they have access to a folder, but their individual user account, J. Smith, is set to be denied, then they're going to be denied. All right, and then we have inherited permissions. So by default, NTFS permissions are inherited from the parent folder. So if you set a permission level on a folder and then you make some subfolders and files, they're going to inherit whatever access levels you gave to that parent folder. And if you make a new folder within another folder, it's going to automatically inherit those permissions as well. Same with a file. All right, so by doing this, it helps maintain consistent permissions and simplifies administration. But you can break this inheritance on a file or folder and set explicit permissions instead if that's needed. So let's say you have a specific user that you want to have special access. Uh, you could set explicit permissions for that user so they will have different access levels than everybody else who has access to that folder. All right, so now let's talk about NTF permissions and subfolders. All right, so like I mentioned, the permissions are inherited from the parent folder. And if you see this as grayed out on the security tab, you'll know that's why, because if you can't change, you'll need to change them from the parent folder. And then we have breaking inheritance. So if you want to break inheritance on a subfolder or file to stop it from inheriting permissions from the parents, uh, you have two options. So you can convert the inherited permissions to explicit permissions or remove all inherited permissions and start from scratch. So I'll be showing you that in a minute here. So let's say you copy a folder into another folder and you don't want this new folder to have the same permissions as the parent folder, you could actually use this to kind of fine tune it and make its own custom permissions. All right, then we have explicit versus inherited permissions. So explicit permissions are set directly on a file or folder, like we see here. And then inherited permissions come from the parent folder, which is the default. And then explicit permissions override inherited ones when conflicts occur. All right, and then we also have propagation of changes. So if you change permissions on a parent folder, and then the subfolders are set to inherit those permissions, this change propagates downward. So if you're on the main folder and you change everything to read only, then everything underneath that's going to be set to read only. So if inheritance is not disabled, then the subfolders will automatically update to reflect this change. But if inheritance is broken, then they do not receive the change. So you can disable inheritance on a folder, so that way when you make new folders, they're not going to inherit those permissions from the parent folder. All right, and then we have permission conflicts. So if a user has allow permissions via inheritance, but deny via an explicit rule on a subfolder, then deny takes precedence. So that's one thing you should always keep in mind, that deny always wins. All right, so when it comes to moving or copying folders, there's a couple things you need to consider here. So if you copy a folder to the same volume, it will inherit the permissions from the destination. And same if you copy it to a different volume. But if you move a folder on the same volume, it'll keep its original permissions. But if you move it to a different volume, it'll inherit it from the destination. So that's something you need to be careful of when you're moving folders around into different folders or to different drives. All right, finally, let's talk about best practices for NTFS permissions. So try to use groups instead of users because it's much easier to manage groups compared to users. So let's say you have a sales team and you have everybody from your sales department in that group, and then you could just assign permissions to that group and not have to worry about assigning permissions to individual users. And then if you need to change permission for everybody in sales, you just change it on the group instead of having it go through and find all your salespeople and change their permissions individually. All right, and then you have the rule of applying least privilege, so give them just the amount of access they need and avoid full control whenever you can, because for the most part it's not needed unless they're an administrator. And like I said before, also avoid using deny, because it can cause issues if you're not keeping track of what you denied.
And it's also a good practice to keep inheritance enabled. So that way, when you add new folders or files, it'll inherit the permissions and you don't have to go through and set them individually. All right, and then standardize and document. So you want to use consistent folder structures and permission templates, document any changes for auditing and accountability, and then review on a regular basis just to make sure you don't have any users that maybe left the sales department and need to be removed from that group and that type of thing. And then you could use the effective access tab when troubleshooting to understand the real combined permissions of a folder. And then always be strategic with your share permissions. So combine share and NTFS permissions carefully. And just remember the most restrictive setting always applies. All right, so now let's hop on a computer and check out a folder and see how this all looks. Okay, so we're on our E drive and we have a couple folders here. We have a backup folder and Cindy's files. So if we check the permissions of this backup folder by right-clicking on it, going to Properties, and then Security, we could see Authenticated Users, Have Modify, and Down, just not special permissions. Special permissions are usually not granted by default unless you want to configure those separately. And then System usually has full control there, but not their special permissions. Same with Administrators. Then we have our basic users here who have read and execute, list the folder contents, and read. And when we click on edit, you can see it's grayed out, so we can't change anything here. Watch what happens if I add a new user by clicking on edit, clicking on add, let's type in Cindy. And one thing you might want to do too when adding users is to always click on the check names button. That way you can make sure that they are a real user and you typed it correctly. So now you can see that I could change the permissions here for Cindy because she has explicit permissions because she's a new user to this folder. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to cancel that out here. All right, now we have this Cindy's Files folder. We right-click this, go to Properties. You can see I could edit these permissions because it's not inheriting the permissions from the parent folder. And technically, the parent folder is the E drive here. So if I go to the E drive, go to the properties, security, you could see I could change permissions here because it's the parent folder. All right, so let's go into here and let's check out this confidential files folder. Check out the properties. So we have the same thing here because it's inheriting it from the parent folder, which is the backup folder. And if I were to click on Advanced, you can see the permission level here and what it applies to. You can, so you can see this is inherited from the E drive and who has full control and who has modify and so on and what it applies to. Then we have this Auditing tab. So if you want to set up auditing, then you could also view the effective access by selecting a user. So let's see what Todd has here. Click on View Effective Access and you can see his permissions right here. And it gives you more of a breakdown of their permissions rather than just the generic ones. And you could also see here that Todd is the owner of the folder. And you could change this as well from here, assuming you're allowed to do so. And you want to be careful when doing this, especially on system folders, because you might end up breaking something. All right, so let's go back to the backup folder here. Go to the Properties, Security. Let's add a new user here. Let's give her full control. And now let's go back into the Confidential File subfolder. And we can see that she has full control here as well. But if we go to Edit, we can't edit this. So what we could do is go to Advanced. And we could disable Inheritance for this folder, the Confidential Files folder. 
So we have the option here to convert inherited permissions into explicit permissions on the object or remove all inherited permissions from this object. So this will just remove the inherited permissions and leave everything as is, and then we can edit them, and this will make everything start from scratch. So usually you want to do this option here. Okay, so now let's go back in here. Click on Cindy. And now you can see we can edit the permissions because it's no longer inheriting it from the backup folder. All right, so I know it could be a little confusing trying to figure out, you know, inherited permissions and how to remove it and what happens when you add new users to specific folders and that type of thing. So it's always best to do a little research before you just start randomly assigning permissions or removing inherited permissions and that type of thing because you might end up uh, causing some problems. All right, so that's your basic overview of NTFS permissions. So hopefully that makes sense. And like I said, make sure you... Uh, plan things out before you start assigning permissions and always try and use groups rather than specific users and then also be careful when using that deny permission all right thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe